New this Year. This is the first time I've seen you in 2024, and yep. I feel like it's just been so, so long. And uh, welcome to all our loyal listeners. Mm. Uh, we're happy to be back. Yeah, and we had some. Uh, we wrapped up uh, 2023 in style with some great shows in studio for Financial Literacy Month. Uh, you know what? I think we hit it out of the park for Financial yeah. Literacy Month. I think it was one of the best Financial Literacy Months we've ever done. Um, you know, with, for us, it's all about education, which mm-hmm. I love. Yep. And I think that's the reason why we do our show. And yeah. I think that's the reason why listeners are listening yep. every, every, every week, yeah. you know, or every month that we're, yep. that we're on. Yep. Um, you know, I think we have a great show lined up for you this time. Uh, it's January. We're going to be talking about Mary Detmus. Uh, you know, January can be a really challenging time for people, mm-hmm. as you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sometimes people overspend in December. So many people have New Year's resolutions all about, like, getting fit. But what about financial fitness? Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be the challenge here yeah. for 2024 and for January. And I think really in this economic climate, mm-hmm. in this you know inflation environment, I think uh, you know financial health and wellness really goes a long, long way. Would you say that uh, 2023 was probably the most newsy, impactful year when it comes to since you've been in the business? I mean, really, people were highly engaged in what was going on with the Bank of Canada. And, and mortgages, I mean, very topical, right, obviously. I think people are more and more educated now, Todd, than they ever were. And I love that we've been a piece of this conversation. You know, you know, we were talking about mortgage lending. We were breaking down a lot of barriers years prior be- before it really came something exciting and things yeah. that people were talking about. And I think, you know, obviously during the pandemic times, it, it, you know, it was such a hot topic for everyone. And we were there part of the conversation. And last year, you know, people having a harder time rates being high inflation being high we were right there having the conversation and you know i love that we were a piece of that and i think that we provided a lot of information uh to our listeners and you know i'm really proud of the job that we did and i'm excited about what we're going to do here in 2024 yeah and we talk about mary detmus and obviously it's a, it's a, the, the time of year in which people kind of reevaluate or, mm-hmm. or evaluate what type of spending they've done mm-hmm. property valuation services have issued their property values and they're up uh, significantly 17 18 percent a I mean, huge shock yeah, to a, huge a lot of shock people, to a lot I think. Of people. And we had this conversation last year, you'll remember. We did, yeah. yeah. We had the conversation about assessments. We've been having it the last couple of years, Todd. Yeah. And I always say that property valuation services is two or three years behind, especially here in Nova Scotia. You know, just due to the fact that our val- our properties were such so undervalued before. And I think typically what they say is the value that you're getting your assessment on today is the value of two or three years ago. So likely we're going to see more increases. Obviously, this is going to impact people's property tax. And a lot of municipalities across this province in Nova Scotia uh, are increasing the tax rates as well. I mean, mm-hmm. everything's going up and they need more money to be able to operate and provide all these services that we're getting every day. Yeah. And, and I guess it, it speaks to affordability in housing. And you, you often talk about uh, the, the Home buying being the uh, Canadian dream, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, another recurring story from last year uh, to this year, of course, will be uh, allowing people to realize that Canadian dream for the first time. That's that's still tough, right? It's a huge hurdle, I think, for a lot of people. And I think just getting into that property ladder, we call it, can be a huge feat. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what type of property you're getting in. Even we're looking at people even being able to get a rental right now especially here in halifax nova scotia the rental vacancy is at like one percent so i would say the rental market is almost even more challenging than becoming a homeowner Mm -hmm. in many cases especially the cost and you know the challenge when you rent you're paying somebody else's mortgage Mm -hmm. yeah 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 and you know unless you really have another plan in terms of investing and saving you know homeowners are you know earning money and in, in, in sense of their property values going up and they're paying down the mortgage every month that goes by. Are you uh, still seeing a, a large influx of people coming from places like Toronto, Montreal, other areas, Ottawa, because we know that that was a real trend during the pandemic. Are you still seeing a lot of those types of people? I would venture to say one in three of our clients still. during the pandemic were coming from Ontario I or see. BC. Okay. I would say now. Yeah maybe one out of 10 or oh, one out of right? 20. It's really dropped off. It then. has really, really dropped off. Yeah. One, I think everyone's suffering here a little bit in terms of what's going on with inflation. Okay. I think also the rates have really slowed people down in terms of potentially buying up mm-hmm. or maybe even entering the real estate market. And, you know, I think things in Ontario, the real estate market has really 
it really grinded to a halt mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. we are still fortunate we are still doing transactions every day yes many less like the percentage is way down mm -hmm. but we're still doing transactions and the one interesting thing here about nova scotia is we are one of the last places in canada that home ownership is still somewhat affordable mm -hmm. especially even how in halifax the average home price here is five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars that is very low compared to the rest of the country hard to believe though when you think about it for the maritimes half a million dollars half a million because, dollars because seems five, like a lot it of money. does it does because 10 years ago that number would have been obviously a considerably lower than that yeah i think half a million dollars 10 years ago you were buying a new construction you know big right you know Two, three thousand square foot yeah, home, yeah. you know, new construction. Yeah, That's yeah. not the case today. It's not going to happen. No. And I was talking to a contractor, uh, Dan Monk, who's uh, who's a, a client of the radio station. Okay. An excellent uh, contractor, very well credentialed. Mm -hmm. He's a professional engineer, and he was talking about uh, the cost of building and building materials, uh, just the, the the skyrocketing prices. And it makes it very, very difficult. And again, we can tie into this when we talk about refinance and people want to do upgrades to their homes. But people need to be cognizant when they're buying a house, I think, and again, these are things we can get into, that you're probably going to want to do some upgrades and it's going to cost you some money, obviously. I think it's definitely going to cost you some money. I think yeah. renovations certainly have gone up. Building a new home has gone up just 10x. I don't even, you know, mm -hmm. even know the percentage that it's gone up, but very significant. Uh, and it's obviously the cost of materials have been impacted, but also the cost of labor. Yep. Labor you, has become more expensive. And, you know, that's uh, just a symptom of what's going on with inflation. You know, yeah. everything is going up. And I think people now are maybe being more planful and they are, you know, really deciding what they want to do. I think before we were just so in this instant gratification culture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when buying a home and first some home buyers were buying, I think just they were just wanting to buy this brand new construction, you know, that home with the granite countertops and the stainless steel appliances. But I think now first time home buyers mm -hmm. are starting to buy a starter home again. And I think mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. But still a starter home is four hundred thousand dollars or whatever. A starter right? home might still be five hundred thousand yeah. dollars, Todd. Yeah. Yeah. But chances are if you're buying a house in that price point, you are buying a resale home that likely is going to need some work over yeah, at some yeah, point, yeah, you know, yeah. either it's going to be dated or maybe it needs some upgrades or, you know, maybe there is some deferred maintenance that you need to deal with. Mm -hmm. Those are the type of homes that a first time home buyer should always have been buying. Yeah. But now that's just the new normal, which I'm OK with. Yeah. So but again, it speaks to the fact that people still need to have uh, in their budget room for these other other things that will come up. Right. Yeah, and I mean, we were talking about this before the show. You know, if you need to have put a roof on your house and if you own a freehold property, there's no one backing you up except yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's why when you buy a home, you know, I think the idea of homeownership and homeownership is part of the Canadian dream, you also need to understand what the risk is and what the responsibility is in terms of becoming a homeowner as well. Yeah. A HELOC and some things like that can be really I think a home equity law and a credit is great. Yeah. And I think that's what we're going to talk about more during our show, where mm -hmm. it's Mary Detmas. We're going to talk about refinance. We're going to talk about debt. We're going to talk about how January is a great time to become more financially healthy. Yeah. Like you always just think about, hey, January is a great time to get to the gym. Yeah. I think January is a great time to open your bills. Yep. Know how much you owe. Know how much you have in the bank. And I think January is a great time to make a plan for the rest of the year. Absolutely. So when it comes to, uh, I, I guess, making a plan for the rest of the year, what are, I mean, and, and it comes to home ownership, obviously, uh, savings. You need to know how much money you have in the bank. You need to all empower yourself with this information. Do you have good credit? All of these types of things, right? Yeah, I think income, assets, and credit. Like we use these kind of as these three categories that we're always talking about. Uh, you know, I, they're so, so important. I think knowing what your situation is, is so is great. And I think having that information is really going to be power in terms of making a plan. Know what your goals are. Mm -hmm. And I think goal setting is important, too. It's like, OK, if your credit's here and you wanted to get it to here, OK, start downloading some of these apps that we talk about. Download Credit Karma and mm -hmm. Borrow Well. Monitor it. See where your credit's at. Make sure you're paying your bills on time. Make it automatic and make your savings automatic too. If you've liked what you've heard and you want to learn more, feel free to visit us online at teamclinton.ca.